shocking news. Indonesia is going to ban palm oil exports. But actually, if you follow this community, you're kind of not too shocked about it. Simply because I've warned about this before. And in their fight for their own domestic inflation, they also resort to such things, which is to hoard their own products to sell locally more to prevent inflation from food from coming too much into their own markets. Reactionary measures. But let's read what President Jokowi has mentioned specifically in his public statement. The government will prohibit the export of raw materials for cooking oil and cooking oil itself, palm oil actually, until a deadline to be determined later. I will continue to monitor and evaluate the implementation of this policy so that cooking oil in the country is abundant at affordable prices. It's been known that you know in Indonesia's supermarkets, palm oil, those processed ones that's ready for cooking, in any case if you don't know, palm oil is the world's biggest consumed edible oil. I've shared this before on this channel. I've even mentioned that I'll be doing a more community videos, but I do see a lot more searches coming on and a lot more uh, momentum towards this importance. That's why I've came back to cover this. So as always, if you appreciate it, help me smash on the like button. Just now I mentioned, no, Indonesia's supermarkets, palm oil has all been removed. People have been buying it and uh, hoarding it. This is actually very expected because if we think that the price is going to go up, we want to buy it now, then we wait and then we need to pay 10%, 20% more down the way. But this reactionary measure by Indonesian governments, let me share with you my perspective. Let's look at their track record of doing things. This is in January 2022, 27 January to be specific. Indonesia's government has forced 20% to be locally sold. Correct? So take note of that. Then, in 9th of March 2022, just one month plus back, they have now increased this to 30% to be forced to be sold domestically. So what I'm suggesting you do is, policy making over there is very fickle. One moment is 20%, one moment is 30%. But the first guess we can take from this is, actually only 20% needs to be sold for local domestic consumption, correct? Indonesia does not need 100% of oil to be consumed locally. There will be oversupply. What I'm suggesting is this supply issue is very easy to fix because only 20% needs. Very short while, you can fill that up. Then how they make policies. Oh, there's political pressure, rioting. Ah, I need to do something. Uh, then let's increase it to appease the public and try to fix it quickly. Let's up it to 30%. Or we increase the export tax. That's why their policy making has always been like that and that should not be a surprise to you. If you want to be invested in this sector, there is political risk, of course. But what is the key takeaway from this is quite simple. What is the real problem of this banning of exports? Is it that really domestic needs a lot more? Or is it corruption that is making companies not follow instructions, compliance with these bans? Think about it, you kind of know the answer already. So that's why whether you have 100%, 30%, 20% really doesn't make a matter if you don't know how to enforce compliance. It's like asking people to wear masks. If you have no policy that punish people, then very soon you realize that nobody cares. So it's a problem quite possibly on implementation. But what we want as shareholders is to know that this risk, when would it abate, correct? Because if you were to ask Mr. Market, Mr. Market is telling you now crisis. Share price for Bumitama has gone down. Golden Agri first resources have gone down 5-6%. Bumitama is fully into plantations and they sell their products to others. They don't have a processing revenue. So Mr. Market's knee-jerk reaction suggests that it will be the hardest hit if a ban is permanent. Everybody across the board that are planting in Indonesia are down. But if you look in Malaysia side, you realize that Ta'an, which is a Malaysian palm oil producer's share price has spiked up simply because Indonesia removed away, Malaysia's exports now become more valuable. But my question to you is, is there no corruption in Malaysia? Is there no food pressure in Malaysia also? Think about it very carefully. You kind of understand that this is faced globally. This knee-jerk reaction will sooner or later come out overseas also. That's why I've, within myself and my wife, I have this motto, this year 2022, watch out for corn more than COVID because everything edible is precious right now. And that's why soya bean's price has actually spiked. You see that soya bean has climbed 3% just for today. And just to give you some backstory on soya bean, 
Swabi is the third most consumed oil. First, palm oil. Second, sunflower oil, which is right now under attack from Ukraine and Russia's exports. Nobody dares to openly mention they are exporting. And then third is soybean. And who are the biggest producers of soybean? If you look at this summary table, you realize that it is Brazil followed by US and Argentina. Actually, China makes the most soybean, but they need it for local consumption. So China is again producing internally for own consumption. The world is fighting and bidding for this. And just now I mentioned number three is Argentina, correct? Take a guess what's happening in Argentina right now. Thousands of Argentine farmers are protesting in Buenos Aires and they are also complaining about the rampant inflation. Argentina is one of the world's top food exporters and the third largest Latin America economy. It is quite easy to guess that political pressure is faced everywhere. India will soon come knocking on Indonesia's door again because they are the biggest importer of palm oil. They will come negotiating again and probably paying a huge levy just to get Indonesia to export again. Could this just be a bargaining chip? appease the public and get some political pressure to increase the prices yet again? I think there's every chance of it happening. So should you buy, sell or hold? Let me show you my own PL since you stuck with me to here. You see that in my trading portfolio, there is a minus 11,000 as of today simply because I have a lot in agriculture, something I've shared before openly on this channel. So hopefully that has calmed your fears and as always, if you're benefit, smash a like, smash a subscribe. Let me know if you really want me to cover back again your commodities. I haven't touched on it for a few weeks already as mentioned, but as this is building, the political pressure and the political games that's going to be played, to me, looks to be building even further. It's not going to stop in Indonesia. There is no change to the world's cooking oil shortage and each selfish move that countries do are just going to create even more price pressure on palm oil as well as all other food sources. In conclusion, this decline in share price for palm oil planters in Indonesia, if it was due to oversupply right now in the market for palm oil, then I'll be a lot more concerned. In any case, I believe that this Indonesian ban is very unlikely to be permanent. You know, I did up this presentation for you last minute. I've actually pushed back something I wanted to share on Tesla. So as always, if you're keen on that topic, smash on subscribe. It'll be a very interesting topic that I have to share with you. And as always, let me suggest this previous video that I have for you that has mentioned my allocation to commodities. I've allocated 29.8% to commodities. And one of the good conclusions over there is to not get overly confident and not get overly aggressive. But hey, right now, opportunities look to be presenting itself and I might move my allocations a bit more. With that, let me invite you to that tutorial and I'll sign up from here. Invest safe as always, do the right steps, think long term, take care and goodbye.